God, as I present myself before you, Lord, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will take over and take complete control of all that I say, Lord God, and all that I do in the name of Jesus. I pray for the hearts of those who will hear. God, I pray, oh God, that the word, oh God, will be understandable, oh God, that your Holy Spirit would minister to each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. God, we bind, oh God, the spirit to the atmosphere that would want to intercede and interject, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we release your blood, release your power, release your might in the name of Jesus. And all God's people say, amen. So today I want to look at, or to encourage us as we continue to move forward, you know, as we turned into this new year 2023 we've been having some wonderful wonderful teachings as we were talking about enlargement we were talking about things like spiritual expansion we also looked at in advancing into the enemy's territory increasing our faith in tough times and then most recently we looked at turning up the thermostat of the church and I believe that these teachings are very important for this season that we're in, not only for our personal lives, but at a corporate level in the church. And I want to add to these teachings as I exhort you today to move forward. Even though, you know, sometimes we may come up on some obstacles, I want to encourage us to continue to press through and to advance, to advance for the sake of your soul, to advance for the sake of our children to advance for the sake of our brothers and our sisters to advance for the sake of all humanity we need to continue to move forward and in order to move forward we there's some things that we ought to be mindful of and i'm going to go through just a few of them today as i speak to you i want us to be mindful of the very fact that we absolutely cannot, cannot use another person's spiritual victory to fulfill our own lack. We cannot use another person's spiritual victory to fulfill our own lack. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. For example, let's bring it down to maybe the family structure. In a family, you know, we may have parents who are serving God and children who have been exposed to the knowledge of God. They've been brought to church. They've been taught certain things. And instead of seeking out God for their own selves, they rely on the parents praying and interceding and serving God and going to church to have them covered you cannot and i repeat move forward we cannot use another person's or rely on another person's spiritual victory to fulfill our own lack quite often sometimes we see that happening in the church we see there are a few maybe a handful at times who are those that are out front and doing the majority, giving of themselves in intercessory prayer. And I'm, say, I'm not saying, I'm not pinpointing any, any person saying you're not doing or you're not doing. You would know for yourself. You would know for yourself how much you are giving to the ministry. You would know. You would know. And I pray that if you are one of those who are riding on the waves of other people's spiritual victories that you would get up and move forward and receive for yourself and allow God to use you and do great and mighty and awesome things through your life. If I had to ask for those who joined the church corporately recently in our praying and fasting, don't raise your hands. But it may be alarming at the amount 
or a number of persons who could honestly say, yes, I did join corporately in praying and fasting. You see, we've got to come to the place where we understand how important these things are. We cannot see the enemy with our, our naked eyes, but he is ever present everywhere, everywhere. He is infiltrating all things, infiltrating in the schools, infiltrating in the mindsets of people, and things have become so corrupt and confusing. So you got to pray for yourself. You got to intercede for yourself. You got to move forward on your own spiritual strength and not rely on the spiritual strength of another. What happens when that person is gone? What happens when mommy is not there anymore? What happens when daddy is not there anymore? What happens when your prayer support is not there anymore? What will happen to you? Will you crumble and fall? I hope not. I hope that you are strong enough that you will be able to keep going and moving forward. And that is what we want to do. We want to move forward. We can't live on the revival of others. We must pursue our own. As we move forward in this changing world, there is one thing that must remain constant, nevertheless. And that is our pursuit after God. There are many things that change around us. One thing must remain constant, and that is our pursuit after God. We must always choose to go after him and follow after him. That must never change. It must never be neglected. In Judges chapter 2, verse, reading from verse 7, Judges chapter 2, reading from verse 7, it says, so the people served the Lord. And I think I'm reading from the New King James Version. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua. Who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. And verse 8 of Judges chapter 2 it says, Now Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, he died. When he was 110 years old. And they buried him with the border of his inheritance at Timnath Theris. In the mountains of Ephraim. On the north side of the Mount Gash. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers. So everybody eventually passed on. Another generation arose after them. Who did not know the Lord nor the work which he had done for Israel. And it is my prayer that there never be a generation out of the Pegwell Community Church that never knew the Lord. That's my prayer. It is my prayer that in our families, there never arises a generation that never knew the Lord. It's my prayer for this country as well. As I said before, there are a lot of strange things that are happening. There has already risen a generation that knows not the Lord. When there is such strange thinking, when you don't know if you're male or female and you are persuaded that you are this thing when it is clearly you can see you are that. And then it is infiltrating everything. Which bathroom should you use? Which prison should we put you in? It is infiltrating and it has everything so corrupted. There has arisen a generation that knew not the Lord. Somebody may ask a question. But can I be in church? And know not the Lord. Can I be in church. Every Sunday morning and night. Every Thursday and know not the Lord. Yes. It can be. It's written in the scripture. In Matthew chapter 7. Verse 21. Jesus said. 
Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but only him that does the will of my father in heaven. So if we are those who are present physically every single time the doors are open, but we are not advancing and doing the will of the Lord, we have found ourselves right in that scripture. But it is my prayer that this church, in this church, there arises a generation that the, that the that there never arises a generation that knows not the Lord. When you know the Lord, you do the will of the Lord. When you know him. They say, Lord, Lord. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter in. Verse 22 goes on to say, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And then Jesus will respond and say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. How many of you want to hear that being said to you? None of us. But what are we doing to make sure that we never hear those words being spoken to us? What are we doing? Are we ensuring that we truly do know the Lord and that he could say, yes, I knew you. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come and enter into this eternal bliss. These things often scare me because of where I stand positionally in the church. I cannot expect or afford to stand and labor over the people. And in the end, I hear, depart from me. I never knew you. That is scary. So we always have to be on our P's and Q's. Always have to be on your P's and Q's so that we know that as we move forward, we're moving forward in the direction where God wants us to go. We see in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, they practice a lot of lawlessness. They were very lawless. They professed to serve God while still bowing down to the idols. Serving God on one side, maybe in the morning they come and they serve God, but in the, the night time they are burning incense to the Beals and all the other false gods. They were not putting away these idolatrous things. So they were serving two masters. And what does God say about that? No one can serve two masters. So either, either you will hate one and love the other, so in that case, which one you are hating and which one you're loving? Certainly it can't be that you're loving God. You can't love God when you're serving the devil. So right there and then, we know that God is being pushed aside. Just like he said in the book of Revelation to the church, you're, you're, I wish that you, were, that you were either hot or cold, but you're lukewarm. Both ends and both extremes are being mixed together. Which one are you? And because you're in the middle, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. Can we be in church, but still not knowing the Lord? Yes. If that is not frightening to you, then may God do a great and mighty work on your heart. May he do a quick work on your heart. These children of Israel, they were very lawless, refusing to put away these accursed things. But now it is time for us to move forward and take 
ownership of our spiritual lives. I mentioned some of the things that in this world that are out of control and they'll only get worse. How do our children stand up for the truth and not get caught up in the fears of all that is going on? We have to encourage them and we have to teach them the ways of the Lord. Every single time we dedicate a child to the Lord. We read the scripture in Deuteronomy, I think it's chapter six or chapter four, verse six. And we, we, we encourage them to teach the word of the Lord diligently to their children. Not only in the primitive age, stage, but it must be constant throughout their life. Whether or not they want to hear it, they must know the truth. They must know the truth. I tell you, it is scary. As I, as I look at my children, it is scary when my son reaches manhood, adulthood, and he decides he wants to cast his eyes on a beautiful lady. I'm afraid because I don't know if she was born a lady. I don't know. Some of the things that I see out there in the media, please don't be, don't be naive to what's going on out there. Be in the know, watch the news, listen to what is going on out there. As I said, you can't thrive on somebody else's victories. Don't leave people to read the news and listen to the news for you to come and tell you what's happening in the news. When you hear something, then you're running. Oh, what's what going on? What's going on? What's that? What's that? But then you tell yourself, me, man, I don't listen to the news, man. Die, man. News boring. Die for me. But still, you want to know what's going on? Read it for yourself. Watch it for yourself. Listen to it for yourself. And build your own self up. You will know what to pray over your home. You will know what to pray over your children. You will know what to pray on the job. You will know what to pray over your country. You will know. Don't sit back on your laurels and wait for other people to do it for you. That is not the way to move forward. So we have to be constantly in prayer. When we find ourselves in that lackadaisical place and we're sitting back and we're not doing what we ought to do, that's how it reaches the point, as I read in Judges chapter 2, where there has arisen a generation that knows not the Lord. You wait for church to teach your children about God. That's how it will arise a generation that knows not the Lord when the child is being taught one thing at church, but at home, it is the opposite. Children become confused. They become confused. They are stronger when they see biblical values being portrayed at home. They know how to identify truth. They know how to shun evil to whom much is given much is required and i thank god for the gift of the holy spirit the children of israel they did not have the indwelling gift of the holy spirit in their season so just maybe god would have probably winked at some of their folly maybe i don't know but don't sit back and say, maybe God will wink at me too. No, to whom much is given, much is required. And you can read that in Luke chapter 12, verse 47 and verse 48. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know, yet committed things deserving of stripes, shall be beaten with a few. In times of ignorance, God winked at. For everyone to whom much is given, 
from him much will be required and to whom much has been committed of them of him they will ask the more so i say to each and every one of us to whom much is given much is required we have been given the holy spirit we need to learn to consult with him and allow him to lead us and to guide us don't sit back and quench the voice of the spirit as he tells you keep your mouth shut don't say nothing but you tell yourself this is my mouth and i have a right to speak whenever i want to speak and however i want to speak you're wrong you are so wrong we read i believe it's in the book of james that speaks about the tongue and taming the tongue because you have a mouth to speak it doesn't mean that you're supposed to say everything you want to say and when i say to much to whom much is given much is required you have a mouth and you will say yes it's my mouth so you're telling me no i can't use it no much is required that you would know when to speak and when not to speak to whom much is given much is required we have access to the throne of grace and we need to make a habit of prayer and intercession let us not side look and neglect these things that god has given to us while we sit back and watch others proceed while we sit back and watch others do while we sit back and watch others accomplish and we just bring our empty plates to partake of all that has been done let's not do that we are moving forward and everybody has a work to do the simplicity of the gospel